1914 and Other Poems by Rupert Brooke 1914 1. Peace by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by J.L. Baldwin Now God be thanked, who has matched us with his hour, and caught our youth, and wakened us from sleeping, with hand made sure, clear eye, and sharpened power, to turn as swimmers into cleanness leaping, glad from a world grown old and cold and weary, Leave the sick hearts that honor could not move, and half men and their dirty songs and dreary, and all the little emptiness of love. Oh, we who have known shame, we have found release there, where there's no ill, no grief, but sleep has mending, not broken save this body, lost but breath, nothing to shake the laughing heart's long peace there, but only agony, and that has ending, and the worst friend and enemy is but death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nineteen fourteen, two, safety, by Rupert Brooke, read for LibriVox.org by J. L. Baldwin. Dear of all happy in the hour, most blessed he who has found our hid security, assured in the dark tides of the world that rest and heard our word, who is so safe as we? We have found safety with all things undying, the winds and morning, tears of men and mirth, the deep night and birds singing, and clouds flying, and sleep and freedom, and the autumnal earth. We have built a house that is not for time's throwing. We have gained a peace unshaken by pain for ever. War knows no power. Safe shall be my going, secretly armed against all death's endeavor. Safe though all safety's lost safe where men fall, and if these poor limbs die, safest of all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. 1914. 3. The Dead. By Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org. By J. L. Baldwin. Blow out, you bugles, over the rich dead, there's none of these so lonely and poor of old, but dying has made us rarer gifts than gold. These laid the world away, poured out the red sweet wine of youth, gave up the years to be of work and joy, and that unhoped serene that men call age, and those who would have been their sons they gave their immortality. Blow, bugles, blow! They brought us for our dearth holiness, lacked so long, and love and pain. Honor has come back as a king to earth, and paid his subjects with a royal wage. And nobleness walks in our ways again, and we have come into our heritage. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. 1914. 4. The Dead. By Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org. By J. L. Baldwin. These hearts were woven of human joys and cares washed marvelously with sorrow, swift to mirth. The years had given them kindness. Dawn was theirs, and sunset, and the colors of the earth. These had seen movement and heard music, known slumber and waking, loved, gone proudly friended, felt the quick stir of wonder, sat alone, touched flowers and furs and cheeks. All this is ended. There are waters blown by changing winds to laughter, and lit by the rich skies all day, and after frost, with a gesture, stays the waves that dance and wandering loveliness. He leaves a white unbroken glory, a gathered radiance, a width, a shining peace under the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. 1914. 5. The Soldier. By Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org. By J. L. Baldwin. If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is for ever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's, breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. And think this heart all evil shed away, a pulse in the eternal mind, no less gives somewhere back the thoughts by England given, her sights and sounds, dreams happy as her day, 
and laughter learnt of friends, and gentleness in hearts at peace under an English heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Treasure by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Perry In Bath on July 23rd, 2016 When colour goes home into the eyes And lights that shine are shut again With dancing girls and sweet birds' cries Behind the gateways of the brain And that no place which gave them birth Shall close the rainbow and the rose Still may time hold some golden space where I'll unpack that scented store of song and flower and sky and face and count and touch and turn them o'er, musing upon them as a mother who has watched her children all the rich day through sits quiet handed in the fading light when children sleep ere night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tia Tahiti by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Perry In Bath on July 23rd, 2016 Mamua, when our laughter ends And hearts and bodies, brown as white, Are dust about the doors of friends Or sent a-blowing down the night, Then, oh then the wise agree, Comes our immortality. Mamua, there waits a land hard for us to understand, out of time, beyond the sun. All are one in paradise, you and Poopery are one, and Tau and the ungainly wise. There the Eternals are, and there the good, the lovely, and the true, and types whose earthly copies were, the foolish broken things we knew. There is the face whose ghosts we are, the real, the never-setting star, and the flower, of which we love faint and fading shadows here. Never a tear, but only grief, dance, but not the limbs that move. Songs in song shall disappear, instead of lovers, love shall be, for hearts, immutability. And there, on the ideal reef, thunders the everlasting sea. And my laughter, and my pain, Shall home to the eternal brain. And all lovely things, they say, Meet in loveliness again. Miri's laugh, Tapo's feet, And the hands of Matua. Stars and sunlight there shall meet, Coral's hues and rainbows there, And Tura's braided hair. And with the starred tiars white, and white birds in the dark ravine, and flamboyants ablaze at night, and jewels, and evenings after green, and dawns of pearl, and golden red, Mamua, your lovelier head. And there'll no more be one who dreams, under the ferns, of crumbling stuff, eyes of illusion, mouth that seems all time-entangled human love. And you'll no longer swing and sway, Divinely down the scented shade, Where feet to ambulation fade, And moons are lost in endless day. How shall we wind these wreaths of ours, Where there are neither heads nor flowers? O oh, heaven's heaven, but we'll be missing The palms and sunlight and the south. And there's an end, I think, of kissing, when our mouths are one with mouth. Tau here, Mamua, crown the hair and come away. Hear the calling of the moon, and the whispering scents that stray about the idle, warm lagoon. Hasten, hand in human hand, down the dark, the flowered way, along the whiteness of the sand, and, in the water's soft caress, wash the mind of foolishness. Mamua, until the day, spend the glittering moonlight there, pursuing down the soundless deep, limbs that gleam and shadowy hair, 
or floating lazy, half asleep. Dive and double, and follow after, snare in flowers, and kiss and call, with lips that fade, and human laughter, and faces individual. Well, this side of paradise, there's little comfort in the wise. Papiti, February 1914 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Retrospect by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Perry In Bath on July 23rd, 2016 In your arms was still delight, Quiet as a street at night, And thoughts of you I do remember were green leaves in a darkened chamber, were dark clouds in a moonless sky. Love, in you, went passing by, penetrative, remote and rare, like a bird in the wide air. And, as the bird, it left no trace in the heaven of your face. In your stupidity I found the sweet hush after a sweet sound. All about you was the light, that dims the greying end of night. Desire was the unrisen sun, joy the day not yet begun, with tree whispering to tree, without wind, quietly. Wisdom slept within your hair, and long suffering was there, and in the flowing of your dress, undiscerning tenderness. And when you thought, it seemed to me, infinitely and like a sea about the slight world you had known your vast unconsciousness was thrown o oh, haven without wave or tide silence in which all songs have died holy book where hearts are still and home at length under the hill o oh, mother quiet breasts of peace where love itself would faint and cease. Oh, infinite deep I never knew. I would come back, come back to you. Find you, as a pool unstirred, kneel down by you, and never a word. Lay my head, and nothing said, in your hands, ungarlanded, and a long watch you would keep, and I should sleep. And I should sleep. Matea, January nineteen fourteen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Great Lover by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Perry. In Bath on July twenty third, two thousand sixteen. I have been so great a lover, filled my days so proudly with the splendour of love's praise, the pain, the calm, and the astonishment, desire illimitable and still content, and all the dear names men use to cheat despair, for the perplexed and viewless streams that bear our hearts at random down the dark of life. Now, Ere the unthinking silence on that strife steals down, I would cheat drowsy death so far, My night shall be remembered for a star That outshone all the suns of all men's days. Shall I not crown them with immortal praise Whom I have loved, who have given me, Dared with me, high secrets, And in darkness knelt to see The inenarable godhead of delight? Love is a flame, we have beaconed the world's night, a city, and we have built it, these and I, an emperor, we have taught the world to die. So, for their sakes I loved, ere I go hence, and to the high cause of love's magnificence, and to keep loyalties young, I'll write those names, golden forever, eagles, crying flames, and set them as a banner, that men may know to dare the generations, burn and blow out on the wind of time, 
shining and streaming. These I have loved. White plates and cups, clean gleaming, ringed with blue lines, and feathery fairy dust. Wet roofs beneath the lamplight, the strong crust of friendly bread, and many tasting food, rainbows, and the blue bitter smoke of wood, and radiant raindrops couching in cool flowers, and flowers themselves that sway through sunny hours, dreaming of moths that drink them under the moon. Then the cool kindliness of sheets, that soon smooth away trouble, and the rough male kiss of blankets, grainy wood, live hair that is shining and free, blue massing clouds, the keen, unpassioned beauty of a great machine, the benison of hot water, furs to touch, the good smell of old clothes, and other such, the comfortable smell of friendly fingers, hair's fragrance, and the musty reek that lingers about dead leaves and last year's ferns. Dear names, and thousand other throng to me, royal flames, sweet water's dimpling laugh from tap or spring, holes in the ground, and voices that do sing, voices in laughter too, and body's pain, soon turn to peace, and the deep panting train, firm sands, the little dulling edge of foam that browns and dwindles as the wave goes home, and wash and stones, gay for an hour, the cold graveness of iron, moist black earth and mould, sleep, and high places, footprints in the dew, and oaks, and brown horse chestnuts, glossy new, and new peeled sticks, and shining pools on grass, all these have been my loves, and these shall pass whatever passes not in the great hour. Nor all my passion, all my prayers, have power to hold them with me through the gate of death. They'll play deserter, turn with the traitor breath, break the high bond we made, and sell love's trust, and sacramented covenant to the dust. Oh, never a doubt, but somewhere I shall wake and give what's left of love again and make new friends, now strangers. But the best I've known stays here and changes, breaks, grows old, is blown about the winds of the world and fades from brains of living men and dies. Nothing remains. Oh dear, my loves, Oh, faithless once again, this one last gift I give, that after men shall know, and later lovers far removed praise you. All these were lovely, say, he loved. Matea, 1914 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Heaven by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Lucy Perry In Bath on July 23rd, 2016 Fish fly replete in depth of June Dawdling away their watery noon Ponder deep wisdom, dark or clear Each secret fishy hope or fear Fish say they have their stream and pond But is there anything beyond? This life cannot be all, they swear, for how unpleasant if it were. One may not doubt that, somehow, good shall come of water and of mud. And, sure, the reverent eye must see a purpose in liquidity. We darkly know, by faith we cry, the future is not wholly dry. Mud unto mud, death eddies near. Not here the appointed end. Not here, but somewhere, beyond space and time, is wetter water, slimier slime. And there, they trust, there swimmeth one, who swam ere rivers were begun. Immense, of fishy form and mind, 
squamous, omnipotent, and kind. And under that almighty fin, the littlest fish may enter in. Oh, never fly conceals a hook, fish say, in the eternal brook. But more than mundane weeds are there, and mud celestially fair. Fat caterpillars drift around, and paradisial grubs are found. Unfading moths, immortal flies, and the worm that never dies. And in that heaven of all their wish, there shall be no more land, say fish. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Doubts by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley. When she sleeps, her soul, I know, goes a wanderer on the air. Wings where I may never go, leaves her lying still and fair, waiting, empty, laid aside, like a dress upon a chair. This I know, and yet I know doubts that will not be denied. For if the soul be not in place, what has laid trouble in her face? And sits there nothing, where and wise behind the curtains of her eyes, what is it in the self's eclipse? Shadows soft and passingly about the corners of her lips, the smile that is essential she. And if the spirit be not there, why is fragrance in the hair? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. There's Wisdom in Women by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley. Oh, love is fair, and love is rare, my dear one, she said, but love goes lightly over. I bowed her foolish head, and kissed her hair, and laughed at her. Such a child was she, so new to love, so true to love, and she spoke so bitterly. But there's wisdom in women, of more than they have known, And thoughts go blowing through them, are wiser than their own. Or how should my dear one, being ignorant and young, Have cried on love so bitterly, with so true a tongue? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. He Wonders Whether to Praise or to Blame Her by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley I have peace to weigh your worth, now all is over. But if to praise or blame you, cannot say, For who decries the loved decries the lover. Yet what man lords the thing he's thrown away? Be you, in truth, this dull, slight, cloudy naught the more fool i so great a fool to adore but if you're that high goddess once i thought the more your godhead is i lose the more dear fool pity the fool who thought you clever dear wisdom do not mock the fool that missed you most fair the blind has lost your face for ever most foul how could I see you while I kissed you? So the poor love of fools and blind I've proved you, For foul or lovely, t'was a fool that loved you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Memory from a Sonnet Sequence by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley some while before the dawn I rose, and stepped softly along the dim way to your room, and found you sleeping in the quiet gloom, and holiness about you as you slept. I knelt there, till your waking fingers crept about my head and held it. I had rest, unhoped, this side of heaven, beneath your breast. I knelt a long time, still nor even wept. It was great wrong you did me, and for gain of that 
poor moment's kindliness and ease and sleepy mother comfort child you know how easily love leaps out to dreams like these who has seen them true and love that's wakened so takes all too long to lay asleep again waikiki october nineteen thirteen end of poem this recording is in the public domain One Day by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley Today I have been happy All the day I held the memory of you And wove its laughter with the dancing light of the spray And sowed the sky with tiny clouds of love And sent you following the white waves of sea And crowned your head with fancies Nothing worth Stray buds from that old dust of misery being glad with a new, foolish, quiet mirth. So lightly I played with those dark memories, just as a child beneath the summer skies plays hour by hour with a strange shining stone, for which, he knows not, towns were fire of old, and love has been betrayed, and murder done, and great kings turned to a little bitter mould the pacific october nineteen thirteen end of poem this recording is in the public domain waikiki by rupert brooke read for librivox by peter yearsley warm perfumes like a breath from vine and tree drift down the darkness plangent hidden from eyes Somewhere an ukulele thrills and cries, And stabs with pain the night's brown savagery, And dark scents whisper, and dim waves creep to me, Gleam like a woman's hair, stretch out and rise, And new stars burn into the ancient skies, Over the murmurous soft Hawaiian sea. And I recall, lose, grasp, Forget again, and still remember A tale I have heard or known, An empty tale of idleness and pain, Of two that loved, or did not love, And one whose perplexed heart did evil, Foolishly, a long while since, And by some other sea. Waikiki, 1913 End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Hauntings by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley In the grey tumult of these after years Oft silence falls, The incessant wranglers part, And less than echoes of remembered tears Hush all the loud confusion of the heart and a shade through the tossed ranks of mirth and crying hungers and pains and each dull passionate mood quite lost and all but forgot undying comes back the ecstasy of your quietude so a poor ghost beside his misty streams is haunted by strange doubts evasive dreams hints of a pre-lethian life of men, stars, rocks, and flesh, things unintelligible, and light on waving grass he knows not when, and feet that ran, but where he cannot tell. The Pacific, 1914 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet Suggested by some of the Proceedings of the Society for Psychical Research By Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley Not with vain tears, when we're beyond the sun, We'll beat on the substantial doors, Nor tread those dusty high roads of the aimless dead, Plaintive for earth, but rather turn and run Down some close-covered byway of the air, some low sweet alley between wind and wind, Stoop under faint gleams, Thread the shadows, 
find some whispering ghost-forgotten nook and there spend in pure converse our eternal day think each in each immediately wise learn all we lacked before hear know and say what this tumultuous body now denies and feel who have laid our groping hands away and see no longer blinded by our eyes End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Clouds by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley. Down the blue night the unending columns press in noiseless tumult. Break and wave and flow. Now tread the far south or lift rounds of snow up to the white moon's hidden loveliness. Some pause in their grave wandering, comradeless, and turn with profound gesture vague and slow, as who would pray good for the world but know their benediction empty as they bless. They say that the dead die not, but remain near to the rich heirs of their grief and mirth, I think they ride the calm mid heaven as these in wise majestic melancholy train and watch the moon and the still raging seas and men coming and going on the earth the pacific october 1913 end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mutability by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox by Peter Yearsley. They say there's a high windless world, and strange, out of the wash of days and temporal tide, where faith and good, wisdom and truth abide. Aeterna corpora, subject to no change, there the sure suns of these pale shadows move. There, stand the immortal ensigns of our war our melting flesh fixed beauty there a star and perishing hearts imperishable love dear we know only that we sigh kiss smile each kiss lasts but the kissing and grief goes over love has no habitation but the heart poor straws on the dark flood we catch a while, cling, and are born into the night apart. The laugh dies with the lips, love with the lover. South Kensington, Macaulay, 1913. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Busy Heart by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org By Anusha Ayer Now that we've done our best and worst And parted I would fill my mind with thoughts that will not rend O oh heart, I do not dare go empty-hearted I'll think of love in books Love without end Women with child, content And old men sleeping and wet strong ploughlands scarred for certain grain, and babes that weep and so forget their weeping, and the young heavens forgetful after rain, and evening hush broken by homing wings, and songs nobility and wisdom holy that live we dead. I would think of a thousand things lovely and durable, and taste them slowly, one after one, like tasting a sweet food. I have need to busy my heart with quietude. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Love is a breach in the walls, a broken gate where that comes in that shall not go again love sells the proud heart's citadel to fate they have known shame who love and loved even then 
when two mouths thirsty each for each find slaking and agonies forgot and hush the crying of credulous hearts in heaven such are but taking their own poor dreams within their arms and lying each in his lonely night each with a ghost some share that night but they know love grows colder grows false and dull that was sweet lies at most astonishment is no more in hand or shoulder but darkens and dies out from kiss to kiss all this is love and all love is but this end of poem this recording is in the public domain unfortunate by rupert brook read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer heart you are restless as a paper scrap that's tossed down dusty pavements by the wind saying she is most wise patient and kind between the small hands folded in her lap surely a shamed head may bow down at length and find forgiveness where the shadows stir about her lips and wisdom in her strength peace in her peace come to her come to her she will not care she'll smile to see me come so that i think all heaven in flower to fold me she'll give me all i ask kiss me and hold me and open wide upon that holy air the gates of peace and take my tiredness home kinder than god but heart she will not care End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Chilterns by Rupert Brook. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Your hands, my dear, adorable, your lips of tenderness. Oh, I have loved you faithfully and well, three years or a bit less. It wasn't a success. Thank God that's done. And I'll take the road, quit of my youth and you, the Roman road to Wendover, by Tring and Lily Who, as a free man may do. For youth goes over the joys that fly, the tears that follow fast, and the dirtiest things we do must lie, forgotten at the last. Even love goes past. What's left behind I shall not find, the splendour and the pain, the splash of sun, the shouting wind, and the brave sting of rain. I may not meet again, but the years that take the best away give something in the end, and a better friend than love have they, for none to mar or mend that have themselves to friend. I shall desire and I shall find the best of my desires, the autumn road, the mellow wind that soothes the darkening shires, and laughter and in fires. White mist about the black hedgerows, the slumbering midland plain, the silence where the clover grows, and the dead leaves in the lane, certainly these remain. And I shall find some girl perhaps, and a better one than you, with eyes as wise, but kindlier, and lips as soft but true and i dare say she will do end of poem this recording is in the public domain home by rupert brook read for LibriVox .org by anusha ayer i came back late and tired last night into my little room to the long chair and the firelight and comfortable gloom. But as I entered softly in, I saw a woman there, the line of neck and cheek and chin, the darkness of her hair, the form of one I did not know sitting in my chair. I stood a moment fierce and still, watching her neck and hair. I made a step to her and saw that there was no one there. It was some trick of the firelight that made me see her there. It was a chance of shade and light, 
and the cushion in the chair. Oh, all you happy over the earth, that night how could I sleep? I lay and watched the lonely gloom, and watched the moonlight creep from wall to basin, round the room. All night I could not sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night Journey by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Hands and lit faces eddy to a line The dazed last minutes click, the clamour dies Beyond the great swung arc of the roof Divine, night, smoky scarved With thousand coloured eyes Glares the imperious mystery of the way Thirsty for dark you feel the long-limbed train throb, stretch, thrill, motion, slide, pull out and sway, strain for the far, pause, draw to strength again. As a man, caught by some great hour, will rise, slow-limbed, to meet the light or find his love, and breathing long, with staring sightless eyes, hands out, head back, agape and silent, move sure as a flood smooth as a vast wind blowing and gathering power and purpose as he goes unstumbling unreluctant strong unknowing borne by a will not his that lifts that grows sweep out to darkness triumphing in his goal out of the fire out of the little room there is an end appointed o oh my soul Crimson and green the signals burn, the gloom is hung with steam's far-blowing livid streamers. Lost into God, as lights in light, we fly, grown one with will, and drunken huddled dreamers. The white lights roar, the sounds of the world die. And lips and laughter are forgotten things, speed sharpens, grows, into the night and on. The strength and splendour of our purpose swings. The lamps fade and the stars. We are alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. All suddenly the wind comes soft, and spring is here again, and the hawthorn quickens with buds of green, and my heart with buds of pain. My heart all winter lay so numb, the earth so dead and fro, that I never thought the spring would come, or my heart wake any more. But winter's broken, and earth has woken, and the small birds cry again. And the hawthorn hedge puts forth its buds, and my heart puts forth its pain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beauty and Beauty by Rupert Brooke. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. When beauty and beauty meet, all naked, fair to fair, the earth is crying sweet and scattering bright the air, eddying, dizzying, closing round, with soft and drunken laughter, veiling all that may befall after, after. Where beauty and beauty met, earth still a tremble there, and winds are scented yet, and memories soft the air, bosoming, folding glints of light and shreds of shadowy laughter, not the tears that fill the years after, after. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Way That Lovers Use by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer The way that lovers use is this. They bow, catch hands, with never a word, and their lips meet, and they do kiss, so I have heard. 
they queerly find some healing so, and strange attainment in the touch. There is a secret lovers know, I have read as much. And there's no longer joy nor smart, changing or ending, night or day, but mouth to mouth and heart on heart, so lovers say. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mary and Gabriel by Rupert Brooke Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Young Mary, loitering once her garden way, Felt a warm splendor grow in the April day, As wine that blushes water through. And soon, out of the gold air of the afternoon, One knelt before her, hair he had or fire, bound back above his ears with golden wire bearing the eager marble of his face not man's nor woman's was the immortal grace rounding the limbs beneath that robe of white and lightening the proud eyes with changeless light incurious calm as his wings and fair that presence filled the garden she stood there saying what would you, sir? He told his word. Blessed art thou of women. Half she heard, hands folded and face bowed, half long had known the message of that clear and holy tone that fluttered hot sweet sobs about her heart. Such serene tidings move such human smart. Her breath came quick as a little flake of snow. Her hands crept up her breast. She did but know it was not hers. She felt a trembling stir within her body, a will too strong for her that held and filled and mastered all. With eyes closed and a thousand soft, short, broken sighs, she gave submission, fearful, meek and glad she wished to speak under her breast she had such multitudinous burnings to and fro and throbs not understood she did not know if they were hurt or joy for her but only that she was grown strange to herself half lonely all wonderful filled full of pains to come and thoughts she dare not think swift thoughts and dumb human and quaint her own yet very far divine dear terrible familiar her heart was faint for telling to elate her limbs sweet treachery her strange high estate over and over whispering half revealing weeping and so fine kindness to her healing Twixt tears and laughter, panic hurrying her, she raised her eyes to that fair messenger. He knelt, unmoved, immortal, with his eyes gazing beyond her, calm to the calm skies, radiant, untroubled in his wisdom kind. His sheaf of lilies stirred not in the wind. How should she, pitiful with mortality, try the wide peace of that felicity, with ripples of her perplexed shaken heart, and hints of human ecstasy, human smart, and whispers of the lonely weight she bore, and how her womb within was hers no more, and at length hers? Being tired, she bowed her head, and said, So be it. The great wings were spread, showering glory on the fields and fire. The whole air singing bore him up and higher, unswerving, unreluctant. Soon he shone a gold speck in the gold skies, then was gone. The air was colder and gray. She stood alone.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Funeral of Youth, Threnody, by Rupert Brooke, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. The day that youth had died, there came to his graveside in decent mourning from the country's ends those scattered friends who had lived the boon companions of his prime, and laughed with him, and sung with him, and wasted in feast and wine and many crowned carouse the days and nights and dawnings of the time when youth kept open house nor left untasted aught of his high emprise and ventures dear no quest of his unshared all these with loitering feet and sad head bared followed their old friend's bier folly went first with muffled bells and coxcombs still reversed, and after trod the bearers hat in hand. Laughter most hoarse, and Captain Pride with tanned and martial face all grim, and fussy joy, who had to catch a train, and lust, poor snivelling boy. These bore the dear departed behind them, broken-hearted. Came grief, so noisy a widow that all said had he but wed her elder sister sorrow in her stead and by her trying to soothe her all the time the fatherless children color tune and rhyme the sweet lad rhyme ran all uncomprehending then at the way's sad ending round the raw grave they stayed Old Wisdom read, in mumbling tone, the service for the dead. There stood Romance, the furrowing tears had marked her roughed cheek. Poor old Conceit, his wonder unassuaged, Dead Innocency's daughter, Ignorance, All shabby, ill-dressed generosity, An argument too full of woe to speak. Passion, grown portly, something middle-aged, and friendship not a minute older she impatience ever taking out his watch faith who was deaf and had to listen to catch old wisdom's endless drone beauty was there pale in her black dry-eyed she stood alone poor mazed imagination fancy wild ardor the sunlight on his graying hair contentment who had known youth as a child and never seen him since and spring came too dancing over the tombs and brought him flowers she did not stay for long and truth and grace and all the merry crew the laughing winds and rivers and lithe hours and hope the dewy-eyed the sorrowing song yes with much woe and mourning general at dead youth's funeral even these were met once more together all who erst the fair and living youth did know all except only love love had died long ago end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old vicarage grantchester by Rupert Brooke, read for LibriVox.org, by Ian King. Café des Vestens, Berlin, May 1912. Just now, the lilac is in bloom, all before my little room, and in my flower beds, I think, smile the carnation and the pink, and down the borders, well I know, the poppy and the pansy blow. Oh, there the chestnuts, summer through, Beside the river make for you A tunnel of green gloom And sleep deeply above And green and deep The stream mysterious glides beneath Green as a dream And deep as death O oh, damn, I know it and I know How the mayfields all golden show And when the day is young and sweet Gild gloriously the bare feet 
that run to bathe, do lieber got. Here am I, sweating, sick and hot, and there the shadowed waters fresh, lean up to embrace the naked flesh. Temperamentful German Jews drink beer around, and there the dews are soft beneath a morn of gold. Here tulips bloom as they are told, unkempt about those hedges blows, an English unofficial rose. And there the unregulated sun slopes down to rest when day is done, and wakes a vague unpunctual star, a slippered Hesper, and there are meads towards Hazlingfield and Coton, where Daspertraton's not Fibolton. Aethergan Neumann, would I were, in Grantchester, in Grantchester. Some, it may be, can get in touch with nature there, or earth, or such. And clever modern men have seen a fawn a-peeping through the green, and felt the classics were not dead to glimpse a naiad's reedy head, or hear the goat-foot piping low. But these are things I do not know. I only know that you may lie day long and watch the Cambridge sky, and, flower lulled in sleepy grass, hear the cool lapse of hours pass, until the centuries blend and blur in Grantchester, in Grantchester. Still in the dawnlit waters cool, his ghostly lordship swims his pool, and tries the strokes, essays the tricks, long learnt on Hellespont or Styx. Dan Chaucer hears his river still, chatter beneath a phantom mill. Tennyson notes with studious eye how Cambridge waters hurry by, and in that garden, black and white, creep whispers through the grass all night, and spectral dance before the dawn, a hundred vicars down the lawn, curates, long dust, will come and go, on lissom, clerical, printless toe, and off between the boughs is seen, the sly shade of a rural dean, till, at a shiver in the skies, Vanishing with satanic cries, the prim ecclesiastic rout leaves but a startled sleeper out. Grey heavens, the first bird's drowsy calls, the falling house that never falls. God, I will pack and take a train and get me to England once again. For England's the one land I know where men with splendid hearts may go. And Cambridgeshire, of all England, the shire for men who understand. And of that district I prefer, the lovely hamlet Grantchester. For Cambridge people rarely smile, being urban, squat, and packed with guile. And Royston men, in the far south, are black and fierce and strange of mouth. At over they fling oaths at one and worse than oaths at Trumpington. And Ditton girls are mean and dirty, and there's none in Harston under thirty. And folks in Shelford and those parts have twisted lips and twisted hearts, and Barton men make cockney rhymes, and Coton's full of nameless crimes. And things are done you'd not believe at Mattingly on Christmas Eve. Strong men have run for miles and miles when one from Cherry Hinton smiles. Strong men have blanched and shot their wives rather than send them to St Ives. Strong men have cried like babes by dam to hear what happened at Bay Bram. But Grantchester, ah, Grantchester, there's peace and holy quiet there, great clouds along Pacific skies, and men and women with straight eyes. Lithe children, lovelier than a dream, a bosky wood, a slumbrous stream, and little kindly winds that creep round twilight corners half asleep. In Grantchester their skins are white, they bathe by day, they bathe by night. 
The women there do all they ought, The men observe the rules of thought. They love the good, they worship truth, They laugh uproariously in youth. And when they get to feeling old, They up and shoot themselves, I'm told. Ah, God, to see the branches stir Across the moon at Grantchester, To smell the thrilling sweet and rotten, Unforgettable, unforgotten river smell, And hear the breeze sobbing in the little trees. Say, do the elm clumps greatly stand, Still guardians of that holy land? The chestnuts shade in reverent dream, The yet unacademic stream. Is dawn a secret shy and cold, Anadiomene silver gold, And sunset still a golden sea, From Hazlingfield to Maddingley? And after, ere the night is born, Do hares come out about the corn? Oh, is the water sweet and cool, Gentle and brown, above the pool? And laughs the immortal river still, Under the mill, under the mill? Say, is there beauty yet to find, And certainty, and quiet kind, Deep meadows yet, for to forget, The lies, and truths, and pain, O oh, yet, stands the church clock at ten to three, And is there honey still for tea? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of 1914 and other poems by Rupert Brooke.